And so when we're talking now about, uh, I guess, some of the sexual assaults that happened in there, um, first of all, for your personal experience, you know, you mentioned that you were sexually assaulted. Can you talk about the first time that that happened? For me personally, you know, at the detention centre, it was detainees that firstly, you know, abused me and done all that sort of shit. And like, not much later on, but later on down the track, um, yeah, it become staff. And then, you know, this went on for a couple of years when I was still obviously really young. Like anyone that knows me, you know, it, it makes it hard to believe when I say these sort of things now, because everyone's known, people that have known me for so long, they, they think back to when I was 15, 16, and they're thinking, how, like, how could this happen? But at the end of the day, I was a small child, you know, like I wasn't, I wasn't who I am now. I wasn't who I was when I was 15, 16, 17. Like I was young, I was scared. I was in a place that I technically, I belong there for the crimes that I did, but I wasn't born into that life, you know, like, I was thrown into it at 10 years old and then just had to fight my way through. Like, I, it wasn't something that I was surrounded by my whole life. I was just dumped into it. And then, as you said earlier, within months, 12 months, my whole life had just gone from everything that I knew was out the window and I was being taught a whole new ball game, you know what I mean? Like, and it's weird, like, with all the counselling and therapy and shit that I've done with psychologists, therapists, psychiatrists, forensic workers, they all come back with that one thing, oh, you know, Kane, it just sounds like you didn't adapt well to that environment. Whereas, you know, prior to getting off the drugs, prior to not being a criminal, prior to wanting to change my life, I'd like to think that I, I adapted like a chameleon, to be honest. Like, I know people that have, you know, been through a fraction of what I went through as a child and they're fucked. <laughs> like, and that's not a joke. Like, they're fucked. Like, in the head. Like, they it done shit to their brain, you know. Like, it's made them predators. It's made them people that, you know, that just dangerous people. Like, and not everyone, in my opinion, that goes through that sort of shit comes out that way. Like, you know, there's people out there now that run banks and own houses and are real estate magnets and all these sorts of things. You, you know, you're not just a criminal because you're abused. You're not just a drug addict because you had a hard upbringing. You're not, you know, every person in every walk of life has had similar things done to them over their life. You know, I don't pretend for a second that my life's unique or my circumstances. Like, the last part of it, yeah, yeah, I do believe that that part of me is different. You know, like I've got hundreds of mates that have been through very similar upbringings and things to me. They're, they're still 10 years off sitting in this chair, like, and that's no joke. Like, they're, you know, they're still entrenched in that life. Like, they, they still haven't found that void that we all want, like anyone that's stuck in that life, they can tell you that they love it and that they're a gangster and that it's awesome and you know, you don't get faster money and whatnot, but until you see these people after they've just had their door kicked in and the cops have actually found drugs that they're gonna charge them with that could get them in years jail and their missus is gonna leave them six weeks after they get it, all these people just talk shit, mate, because I've seen thousands of people come through prison and come through Ashley's and like, the person they are before their freedom and their dignity is taken is not the person they are once it's taken and they realise that they're just another bare bum in the shower. Like, you know, like, it's a joke, really. And I guess when you, you know, when you were talking about all that and the, the sexual assaults, you mentioned that it happened amongst the inmates with you, but then also from security yeah um 
So therefore, it wasn't an isolated incident. In the time that you were there, can you recall how frequent this sort of shit went on for you? Like how much of this did you have to endure in that time? I, I, I'm not even sure to be honest because I believe I somehow have blocked a lot of things that have happened out because I'm reminded and asked about things over the last 10 years even that I just do not remember, like by people that were there with me, like in the boys' home, and they're just like, how the fuck could you forget that? Like, how, how do you remember this, but you don't remember that? Like, how do you, how come you can remember that time, but you can't remember this time? How, like, it's, and I think it just comes down to, you know, as, as I touched on earlier, some people consider some things more serious than others. Like one person's big is another person's small. One person's fast is another person's slow. Like, and for me personally, the things that, you know, have effectively ruined my life for such a long time are those incidents that I held on to. Not so much the other kid that was there with me or the other kid that was being abused because that's their experience. It might have been the next time that fucked their life, like, so they don't remember that time that ruined mine, but they remember the next one that ruined theirs, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's not like everyone has the same reaction to what happens to them. Even though you could have two 12 year old kids in the same car or in the same room or whatever, same offender, same abuse, same period of time, doesn't matter. One of them could be recovered in 10 minutes and have forgotten about it, not you know, not forgotten, but had already put it behind them. Whereas that other kid could be fucked for the next ten weeks, you know, not eat and not sleep and not like it. Just it's hard, like, but a lot, a lot more than what should have happened. That's for sure. Like, you know, the thing was back then, it, staff could just literally come and grab a kid and be like, "Come with me." You go with them, and then they're like, yep, let's go, and they'll have a set of car keys, and you'll literally go and jump in the car with them, and they're taking you off the property. Like, no, you don't have to sign nothing. You don't have to go through no checkpoint. No, like, you're just out of there. Like, jump in the car and drive off with a fucking worker like it was normal, you know what I mean? Like, and until it's too late, you're not to know, you know? Like, or that's how it was for me it wasn't like he was like come with me i'm gonna fucking punch your head in like mm. Mm. yeah if the first negative experience of that sort was when you were 11 at which age did it just stop did it carry the boys all home? the way th yeah did it carry all the way through your time in the boys home or did you get to an age in there where you were old enough to where they just wouldn't do that shit yeah no it got to I think I was 14. I, well, I was 13 the last, I know I was 13 the last time I was abused in the boys' home, but once I turned 14, I was just like, you know, I'd had a growth spurt. I'd been doing, I'd been doing weights and stuff like for ages, but I'd finally had a growth spurt and was just like, fuck this like there was a couple in particular that I really wanted to hurt and that that was my driving force like I just thought if I just you know keep fighting with these other kids and practicing with the other kids and doing weights with these other kids like the bigger kids you know I'll get big and I'll get strong and then I'll smash these cunts like simple as that and that's exactly what happened like and I, unfortunately you know I carried that attitude with me for the next 15, 16 years, like until I was 27, 28 years of age, like I had the worst chip on my shoulder. Like you, people that see me now, they don't recognise me now. Like they're just like, fuck, like you're a totally different person. Like just so happy as well, you know? And then so if at 14 is the last time, you know, shit of that nature happened to you, that's obviously not where it stops for other people. In terms of other sexual assaults that happen in there, can you recall 
what the worst thing is that you feel like you saw? The worst abuse that I seen and that I experienced would have been me and, you know, two of my very close mates to this day being taken off the property together by one single person and like, you know, being made and exposed to each other's abuse. You know what I mean? Like being together, like having to be there together. Like it wasn't like just me being taken, it was all three of us, like. And like what that does to your mind at that age, like, you know, clearly we're all still best friends to this day. Like, not that it's the abuse that made it that way, but when something like that happens, to you and two of your good friends at such a young age, it's pretty inevitable that it's going to build a fucking bond between you, you know? Like, um, but yeah, it's weird, you know, like, because as I said, you take me sitting here now after everything that's happened to me and like, there's a lot of ways you could describe me as a person, but you take these other two men and yeah, when you put all three of us together, you're left with a pretty frightening combination of what abuse can actually do to people. Like, you know, because we're three very different people. Although we're very alike, we are three very, very different people. The, the, the lesson. Oh, yeah.